So there's some brand new research out regarding the effectiveness of Tom Cataly on testosterone production, as well as some new research on its possible toxicity. And so since it's been uh, about two years since I've published my last video on Tom Cataly, and it's gained a ton of attention over that time span, I figured this would be a good time to do a follow-up video on this brand new research. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, for those of you that aren't super familiar with Tom Cataly, Tom Cataly is an herbal supplement that has been taken for um, hundreds of years for the purpose of improving fertility and improving libido in men. However, there is some recent research that's emerged over the past uh, 10 to 20 years that does seem to indicate that it might also be effective at uh, increasing testosterone in not just hypogonadal and infertile men, but also in young healthy men as well, which makes it super promising as um, somewhat of a universal um, testosterone booster. However, because the research on Tonkatali is still somewhat in its infancy, it's not not exactly clear um, how effective Tonkat Ali might be or the exact mechanisms of action by which it actually might uh, increase testosterone. And so it's always great to see new research come about that investigates the effectiveness of various herbal supplements, um, especially ones like Tonkat Ali that, is, uh, that appear to be especially promising. Now, the first study that I think is important for us to dive into here um, is this study right here that actually ju was just published a few weeks ago. Now, the study in particular was actually a meta-analysis of the current literature on Tonkat Ali, which is simply just um, almost like the gold standard of research and is simply a um, kind of an, an analysis of the existing data and the existing research that already exists on a particular topic. And in this instance was um, obviously a meta-analysis on the effectiveness of Tonkat Ali on improving uh, testosterone production. Now, the researchers of the study concluded that this systematic review highlights the beneficial use of Uricoma longfolia supplementation to enhance testosterone levels, particularly in those men suffering from hypogonadism. And the researchers also went on so far as to say that it might actually represent a promising alternative to TRT. Now, the first few things that I think are important to point out here are, one, that the researchers did in fact conclude that Tonkat Ali does have the potential to increase testosterone production, not just in hypogonadal and in fertile men, but also in uh, regular kind of young, healthy men as well, which is pretty promising. And the second thing to point out here is that it's fairly interesting that they are actually suggesting that Tom Cataly could be an alternative to TRT. Now, in my personal experience, Tonkatali does not even come close to comparing to things like performance enhancing drugs and uh, TRT. However, specifically for men uh, that don't want to take that kind of commitment and that step to go on to TRT, uh, Tonkatali might represent a good alternative as a first step alternative. Now, it is worth noting here that uh, there are a few limitations to this study, namely that the meta-analysis only reviewed five clinical trials, which is fairly low, admittedly, for a, uh, a meta-analysis. However, it is still pretty promising to see the researchers of this study come to the conclusion that Tonkat Ali may be a very promising option uh, for guys that are suffering from low testosterone. Now, there were also a couple of different individual studies that were referenced in in this study uh, that were actually that actually took place last year that are worth diving into individually and so I do want to kind of take a look at those um, in particular and the first one we're going to look at here um, was actually a study that was uh, was carried out in young healthy active men and in this study they did indeed find that Tonkat Ali could significantly increase testosterone now the interesting thing about this study in particular is that they did not find an increase in lutein hormone or follicle stimulating hormone and the reason that is so interesting is that all of the data up until this point that has been performed in rodents and in in vitro studies suggests that the way one or at least one of the primary ways that Tom Ali increases testosterone is by directly influencing and increasing the levels of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone which are um, technically pituitary hormones that are released from your brain that kind of stimulate 
the testes to actually produce testosterone and sperm. And so the fact that they did not find an elevation in luteinizing hormone or follicle stimulating hormone in that study is fairly interesting. And what's more interesting is that there's also another study that was mentioned in the meta-analysis that was also published last year that found extremely similar results that uh, Tonkatali did in fact in younger healthy populations did not increase levels of luteinizing hormone. Now again the reason this is so important is that up until this point it's been thought that the primary mechanism of Tonkatali has been its ability to one uh, prevent the conversion of testosterone into estrogen via the aromatase enzyme and two to actually block um, estrogen receptors in the central nervous system specifically in the hypothalamus therefore telling uh, your brain to stimulate the production of testosterone now for those of you that aren't super familiar with this physiological process when your body produces testosterone a portion of that testosterone is actually converted into estrogen by the aromatase enzyme and when that estrogen kind of builds up in your body it will stimulate receptors in the hypothalamus which then tell your your brain to shut down the production of luteinizing hormone which is the uh, hormone that stimulates again the testes to produce testosterone and so if Tonkatali had the ability to block this pathway, it, it therefore um, could theoretically kind of stimulate the production of testosterone uh, kind of top down from the brain to the testes. Now, I will say that both of the studies that did find no effect on luteinizing hormone were both performed in younger, healthy populations. And so it is possible that uh, Tonkatali um, can still increase luteinizing hormone, maybe in older and hypogonadal uh, men and it's also possible that there's some type of species uh, specific response of Tonkatali whereby it's able to uh, increase luteinizing hormone via an anti-estrogenic property in rodents but not in men. Now I say all of this to say that there may actually be another mechanism by which Tonkatali is actually increasing testosterone apart from its ability to block estrogen receptors and cause um, a an increase in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And so um, I do want to dive into some of those possible mechanisms. And the first one I want to talk about is Tonkatali's possible action on the HPA axis as opposed to the HPG axis. Now the HPG axis is the hypothalamal uh, pituitary gonadal axis, whereas the HPA axis is the hypothalamal pituitary um, adrenal axis. Now, there is one study in particular that does show that Tonkatali has the ability to uh, lower cortisol levels to some degree, which is largely controlled by the adrenal glands. And so it is possible that Tonkatali is possibly kind of influencing the uh, cholesterol pregnenolone uh, uh, cortisol pathway, whereby um, it's able to increase some of the intermediary hormones that are responsible and in between cholesterol and testosterone. However, this is not fully kind of like figured out in the in the science yet. I'm just kind of speculating, but it is possible. Now, there is another possible mechanism whereby Tonkatali can increase testosterone, and that was demonstrated in this paper in particular, where it showed that Tonkatali might actually be directly influencing some of the gene transcription in testicular cells, whereby it's able to affect the genes and how they operate and how they transcribe and therefore increase testosterone via that mechanism. Now, in this study in particular, is an in vitro study, so it's kind of like a we're kind of grasping at straws at this point. However, um, in this study, they were exposing um, the the leg cells of the testes, kind of like in a in vitro model, which is simply just like a petri dish, and they were exposing it to a an aqueous solution of Tonkatali, and it it was actually directly influencing the uh, the lenic cells to produce testosterone completely independent of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And so there may be just a, a direct effect of Tonkatali on the um, cells that are contained in the testes, uh, whereby it's able to influence the production of testosterone via a direct mechanism as opposed to a, a kind of hormonal pathway. Now, this idea was also uh, mirrored in a study where uh, the researchers were taking castrated rats and exposing them uh, to 
Tong Catali. And in this model, these rats also experience an increase in libido, which means that there appears to be some direct relationship with Tong Catali and its ability uh, to improve at least libido apart from its hormonal mechanisms. Now, there is one last thing I do want to point out about a previous study that we mentioned, and that is this one right here, where the researchers uh, were taking men and exposing them to Tong Catali over a period of four and eight weeks. And what's super interesting about this study in particular is that they did find a significant increase in testosterone in these healthy males at four weeks. However, <laughs> At eight weeks, they did see a decline back to baseline, which means that there may be some interaction and adaptation of the body to consuming things like Tong Catali, which kind of further strengthens my position on the fact that Tong Catali needs to be cycled, not just to um, prevent tolerance, but also to just simply maintain the benefits of Tong Catali on a macro level. Now, when it comes to a specific dosing protocol and cycling protocol, I don't I don't really think that there's enough evidence quite yet to suggest one is absolutely right. However, at the bare minimum, I would say like a four to eight week cycle would probably be best uh, just so you're not throwing your money out the window and in the, kind of like the off time of two to four weeks uh, using other herbs such as maybe ashwagandha or shilajit or even fadoja in order to kind of experience that improvement in uh, testosterone production and libido and stress levels. Um, and so again, I don't know if there's an exact way to do that quite yet. However, it is quite clear that uh, cycling Tong Catali may be in your best interest. Now, before I close out this video, I do want to point to one more interesting study that was published last year, and that is this study that was investigating the toxicological uh, data surrounding Tong Catali. And this was also somewhat of a meta-analysis, even though it's also somewhat limited. But uh, the main thing I want to point out here is that the researchers did conclude this. The panel considers that positive results of the in vitro chromosomal aberration test and the outcome of the in vivo comet essay support the evidence that the NF, which is Tonkin Ali in this instance, has the potential to induce DNA damage, which is of concern, particularly locally for tissues that represent first sites of contact. Now, this does appear to be somewhat damning for Tonkin Ali as an herbal supplement. However, there are a few things I do want to point out here. And the first one is that the the research papers that the panel uh, was using in this uh, meta-analysis to assess the toxicity of Tong Catali are actually not even published. And so it's impossible to even cross-reference these studies that this panel was using to support these claims. But they also did note in this study that the only dosages that were uh, found to be toxic were 2,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Now, for those of you that aren't super well-versed in the conversion of rodent doses into human doses, this is roughly the equivalent of 30,000 milligrams of of Tong Cat Ali extract. And so unless you're consuming 30,000 milligrams, which is like a hundred times a recommended dose, I would not be worried about DNA damage whatsoever. And on the contrary, there's actually some evidence to support the fact that Tong Cat Ali might actually uh, be potent as an anti-cancerous agent. And so um, when it comes to the evidence surrounding its ability to cause DNA damage or toxicity at any level, it, it is weak at best. And and um, on the contrary, again, there is some evidence to suggest that it's actually has some positive influence when it comes to toxicity. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much all I have for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and make sure to check out the description for um, a link to 25% off of an at-home testosterone test, as well as a link to the complete guide to supplementation, which is a guide that outlines all of my thoughts on pretty much every topic of supplementation in which supplements are actually proven uh, to be effective for specific health goals. And so if you're interested in checking that out, make sure to check out the description. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.